All right, welcome back to This Week at the Chamber. I'm Wilson Marseille here with Amy Deer. Amy, welcome. Welcome. Good Hi. morning. How you doing? Happy November. Yeah, it's nice. It's today's nice. We'll see if it we'll see if the weather holds up for the while. Uh, we've got another great week in front of us. Mm-hmm. Starting with, I'm first. Okay. So starting with on Tuesday, we've got the Youth Leadership Academy, Hospitality, and Customer Service Day. So our uh, Boone County leaders, these juniors in high school, are going to be having an experience in the morning with some local leadership and businesses. They'll hear from Matt Bell talking about tourism and the hospitality industry. And then in the afternoon, they'll have a miniature kind of retreat up to Big Cedar and learn about hospitality and customer service from their perspective, have do some, I was going to say have fun at yeah, Fun Mountain. They will have and, fun. <laughs> uh, and also, you know, ask some questions, polling their employees, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, big day for YLA. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the Youth Leadership Academy. And then we've got ribbon cuttings on Wednesday. Wednesday, yes. We have a ribbon cutting for Matt McKinney Shelter Insurance on Wednesday at 930 in the morning. Mm-hmm. His address is 1110 Highway 6265. So if you would like to join us, we would we would appreciate that. And it's, it's they're, they're right there about almost across the road from Beefaroo. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, going to cut the ribbon for Matt McKinney Shelter Insurance. Yep. Welcoming Matt to the chamber and to the community. Matt's the new shelter agent in town. And so, yeah, join us on Wednesday. Yes. How about that? And then Thursday evening, we've got the final session of the WIN Leadership Academy. That's one of our three leadership academies. Of course, we talked to YLA. Uh, people know about Boone County Leadership, but this is our Educator Leadership Academy. They have their final session, so they'll be ending their book study and having some roundtables with alumni from the past two years of the classes that are coming back to kind of talk about where has this conversation been, what are important connections to make with businesses, how are we integrating and helping our students prepare for success after high school. So we'll have some special guests there. Uh, Marsha Masters from Economics Arkansas will be in town, and so she's going to come interact with the teachers and kind of hear some of the conversation, and so is Matushka Briggs from the St. Louis Fed, who we've had here on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, Matushka will be back in town doing some touring. She's uh, actually doing an economic forecast summit in Little Rock that morning, then making the trip up here. Oh, my goodness. So she's got a a long day of travel (laughs) ahead of her, but uh, we'll be happy to have both of them interacting with our educators on Thursday. Awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. And then this week, we have some behind-the-scenes work to get ready, but Friday kicks off our Shop Local campaign, Santa's Shopping List. Yes, different Mm -hmm. than in years past. So this is a new new initiative, new program, new style, but same same shop local feel, right? So the last few years, we've had a scavenger hunt with the little code, and you get on Facebook Messenger, Mm -hmm. you text it, and it was was okay. I would say – moderately successful. I mean, success for us is we want to drive sales for businesses here in our region, right? Mm-hmm. And so it was hard to measure that, um, although we did get a tremendous amount of people uh, exploring out in our community. Yeah, locating businesses that maybe they didn't know where the location, you know, was exactly. So, I mean, it was great to help familiarize when we did that. So now we're going to put a little different spin on it and try to motivate and incentivize doing your Christmas shopping locally. Yeah, we want to see how many people can source as many of their gifts locally as possible. So we'll have a list, all of our participating businesses. It'll have some festive stuff on it, but uh, it'll be Santa's shopping list, and it'll have all of the businesses listed. And, of course, you can you can take that one you can take that one list and you can fill it out for an entry to win some prizes. Mm-hmm. But for every time you shop at one of the participating businesses, you can get an additional entry in there. So you go shop at downtown at a few of our businesses, Mm -hmm. put your name and phone number at your receipt, drop it in the box. There's another entry. So increase your chances to win by spreading the love around our community, spreading, spreading those dollars. So that's what we want. It's not about how much you spend, but we want you to get out there and find our businesses. Yes. How about that? I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Shop local. We'll do it again next week, too. We'll talk a little bit more. Uh, Our guest today is not shop local related. It's quasi shop local related. It's shop local adjacent, which is Chris Anderson at Psych Bike, downtown Harrison, telling a little bit of his story and about entrepreneurship and about some of the some of the mountain biking. uh, Let's let's call them initiatives that have happened here in Harrison, Mm -hmm. because he's been doing Psych Bike as a group 
as an initiative for him and their counseling and family therapy business for like 10 years. And it finally turned into a retail shop. So I think he's got a great story to tell about some public-private partnership. And maybe I should quit spoiling all of it and just get to our conversation with Chris Anderson. Right. Yeah. But it's kind of a safe place for folks to come and talk about bikes. Bike shops can be intimidating. You know, if you're not going in with a $4,000 bike and know everything, you know, um, we welcome everybody. And so we're a small town bike shop, just like I grew up with. And our little niche is the psychotherapy component to it. Mm-hmm. And so Psych Bike started about a decade ago, or a little bit more than that, as me doing therapy outdoors. That's literally what it started as. And it started as, let's go on a bike ride, or let's go on a hike, let's go here. And at that point in time, the BOC was kind of the thing. And so that was my spot that we would go to. Oh, yeah. And I would do two or three of those a year. And then it kind of started snowballing. And then more people wanted to do it. And then people wanted to do it, but they didn't have bikes. And they were like, hey, do you have bike rentals? Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of grown from that to now it's a full-fledged bike shop. Carrying Diamondbacks, Red Lines, I sips. I mean, we're carrying yeah. bikes and we're selling bikes. That's that's what's kind of caught me off guard. When the bicycle industry had a boom in COVID, and that bubbles over, and so now I tell everybody the same story about my timing of starting a bike shop. It was a perfect time to start a bike shop. Mm-hmm because all of the bicycle dealers were basically wanting to give bikes away. They just had huge amounts of inventory, and they wanted to just really sell this inventory off. So it was a great time to start a bike shop. Right. So you you talked about COVID. There was really high demand, Mm -hmm. so supply tried to catch up. And then when demand tapered off, there was extra supply, right? Is that what you're describing? Right. And we're still dealing with that extra supply right now. Mm -hmm. And my business, the therapy business, COVID didn't stop it. We just switched to telemed. So instead of being in person like this, we just did it virtual. And so our business actually increased during COVID, which kind of put us in a spot to where we have a little bit more capital to invest and do something else. And our first thought, of course, was to put more therapy offices in. And we did. We Mm -hmm. added two. Um, But I have a very wonderful wife who was like, why don't you do that bike shop thing you've always talked about? Yeah. And I was like, yes, I will. And... We've got a few things going on. BMX is my thing. I grew up racing BMX. Mountain biking I've done for about the past decade, but I grew up racing BMX. And I had a little team that we were taking from Harrison over to the Springdale area to, we were about six kids and we would race BMX. And some members of the heart committee, I had no idea this committee even existed, but some members of the heart committee got wind of what I was doing. Heart is Harrison Exercise Adventure Recreational Recreational Trails. Trails. Right. Yes. That's another one. That's another one. 